This past August, I was honored to be a guest on Behind the Podcast, talking all about this podcast, my teaching career, and more. You can check it out on YouTube or at scottwittenberg.com. Lesson 87 Hello again. One of the assignments I give my advanced photography classes is what I call something to do with. The idea is for students to make connections using a word that has been randomly chosen and come up with a way to create an image that incorporates the word in a creative, imaginative way. This may sound a bit like the 26 Things Project I told you about in the What to Shoot episode, and it is similar in some regards, but this assignment has a couple of added twists. For one thing, the students don't get to choose what word they're going to use. Instead, I have one of them spin a bingo cage and read off the number of the first ball that rolls out. I have preloaded the bingo cage with 50 balls numbered 1 to 50 and created a list of 50 words numbered from 1 to 50. So if, say, a number 12 ball rolls out of the cage, the word that corresponds to number 12 on the list is a word they will use. More often than not, I'll hear groans from the students when I read off the word. For example, this past week the word was wood. They thought that wood was not only a boring word in the first place, but a boring subject as well. This is exactly what I wanted to happen. I explained to them that this is the word, like it or not, and that I didn't create this assignment to make their lives easy. Instead, I want them to be forced to think outside of the box and come up with an image that is awesome. This sounds like a tall order, and it is, especially for kids who have not yet fully developed their critical thinking skills. To help calm them down, I remind them that the name of the assignment is something to do with, and in this case, something to do with wood. The idea is not to take a wooden object and photograph it, but to create a scene where wood is somehow incorporated into it, not necessarily in an obvious way. I suggest that they begin by writing the word down on a page in their workbooks and brainstorm things they can think of that are made of wood. From this, they figure out a way to include one of those things in their scene. This could be something as simple as this student's idea, a very cute dog carrying a stick in its mouth. How can anyone not love this photo? This student started with the basics and chose a stick to provide a subtle but effective component in a shot with his pet serving as the main subject. A roaring bonfire provided the background for this shot of a couple silhouetted against the dancing flames. So what began as a simple word has now become much more as a result of this student combining her imagination with her photo skills to create a wonderful photo. A simple wooden pencil became the motivation for this portrait of a student doing her homework. Her decision to make the image grayscale helped make this common, ordinary scene all the more extraordinary. With Halloween just around the corner, this student decided to incorporate a pair of old trees to create the perfect place for this scary character to lurk behind. Another word that was used was vegetable, and here's what one student came up with. A girl using carrots as curlers in her hair. How original is that? Hard to believe that the word vegetable led to the creation of this wonderful candid shot, but it's true. French fries, anybody? A vegetable-based popular snack in the form of popcorn inspired this student to capture her subject watching a movie on TV. What makes this shot so effective is the atmosphere created with a TV providing the solitary source of light. So the key to success on this assignment is a keen imagination, creativity, and skill with your camera. If you'd like to give this assignment a shot yourself, you can use my word list, which I've included here, or download a PDF on my Photography 101 website, or you can create your own list instead. Either way, a bingo cage isn't necessary. You could simply tell someone to think of a number between 1 and 50, and you're on your way. I'd like to thank the following students for the use of their awesome photos in this episode. Coleman, Ingrid, Lydia, Kaylin, Penelope, Clara, and Lucy. Without your photos, I could have never done it. Well, that's about it for this lesson. I hope you've learned something new and that you'll give something to do with a try. Until next time, goodbye. Mm -hmm.